What's up guys? Let's talk about dungeons and PvE. Nani? Now you're gonna say like what? You never make content about it and you don't care about it. That's kind of true. I mean I hardly make any content about dungeons outside of the maybe occasional, you know, free to play Hydra team guide or Dark Phase speedrun guide. Those are pretty much, you know, as far as I go. And I'm, you know, pretty like pragmatist PvP player that I care about arena and PvP. When I do PvE content, I want to get all of it done and complete it in order to maximize the gains that I can get for PvP, of course. And I want to do it with as little effort and as little resources as possible. Meaning that I don't want to put my good gear on champions that I use on some clan boss or whatever. I want to use my worst possible gear and champions that I would never use in PvP. Unless I can use them in the same build that I would use them in PvP regardless. That's basically my mentality in the game. I know there's a lot of PvE enjoyers that like to min-max their Hydra teams and so on. Though I think those kind of stuff are a little bit overshadowed by how strong Tranda and Double Yumeko is. But regardless of that, I try to do everything in PvE, not in PvP. PvP, I min-max, I try hard, I want to win, I want to compete against accounts that are like trillions times better than my account, but not in PvE. PvE, I just want to get all of the rewards and hopefully full auto AFK, that's what I want to do. You know, without losing battles and so on. And what happened recently that was very good for me and everybody and kind of shuffled the deck um, is the change that they need did to the new dungeons. I hope that that's the point of this video. I kind of want to talk about the new dungeons. <laughs> not not the most newest one, but the other other three new dungeons. Iron Twins, Sand Devil and Phantom Shogun. All of those three, I think, were kind of overly too hard. And they are completely necessary if you want to progress in the game. Like, let's say that you can't make a team to farm Fire Knight 10. I don't think... <laughs> I, I have, as you can see, I'm... I'm not even farming it, I have like 7 minute Fire Knight 10 run. You don't need a good, I mean I could make a good team, don't get me wrong. I could make 2 minute or 1.5 minute for a Fire Knight. I could literally do it with this exit setup if I put my good gear on them and speed tune them for PvE. But that's not what I want to do, that's not what I'm about. But you can completely ignore Fire Knight, it's not mandatory. You might need it for Savage, but I don't with my years of lethal farming, and the same applies to all of the other, let's say, old or traditional dungeons. But the three new ones, you can't skip them. But what they did recently is that um, they basically nerfed all three of them and made them more accessible, which I appreciate, you know. I was honestly struggling with Iron Twins before update. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't speed farming this and I was even getting some losses every now and then, unless I used a lot slower team, it used to be very painful. But as you can see right now, they changed it. All three of them are easier, they're kind of like the other old dungeons that you don't really need to fully, you know, do their mechanics, or I mean, you can follow their mechanics, but you don't have a long battle, so you don't need to have like fully speed tuned team for like 5 minute battle. You can basically, you know, speed rush them or brute force them with nougars nowadays. And that's what I recommend for you guys to do. All three of these dungeons right now are basically doable in your normal PvP builds and PvP champions. Maybe here on Iron Twins, you know, obviously Knut and Akrisia are not PV PvP champions, but you could substitute them. But as you can see, I'm basically doing this in like a minute on an unspeed, unspeed tuned nuke team. I don't have, you know, 100% uptime on block damage. I don't have burns or anything like that. Nothing complicated, nobody speed tuned. We're just brute forcing this with Knut and other damage dealers. 
and you can probably do the same. I mean, just put your Knut and Ankara and whatever other good champions that you might have for this, instead of whatever old team that you were running if you didn't update it. One thing I would caution if you do this team, you definitely want to have Gnut, I, uh, like the, the fastest champion or the first champion in your team order. Ankara can be before him, but you don't want any other champion to be before him. Because if Gnut dies, Ankara is gonna revive him with cooldowns intact. And if multiple champions die, it's gonna revive the champion first in the team order. So that's just one little trick that you want to do, but basically everybody can do this if you didn't already update your Iron Twins team. Now it's time to do this and go with this setup. This is not like a detailed guide that what specific champions you you have. I know you might not have Acrisia, he's not mandatory. You might not have Kaimar or other cooldown resets. They are not mandatory. You just you you run the Knut and whatever nukers and supports that you have that can work with him, Th that's good enough. I mean, depends, but generally it's good enough and you don't even need good gear or Knut. And if you had like Marius for instance, Marius would be super good here. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a quick look at all of my dungeon themes. I'm just showing you that I'm not running any big brain setups, even though I'm super end game. And this is now kind of fast and good enough. Okay, here's another setup we're running. This is, you know, the very old and popular Guard Seeker team. But right now we're just running Gnut and Guard Seeker and bunch of supports that not supports, bunch of fodder that we are leveling up for tournaments. And you can have it with there's a lot of you know options for the speeds that you can have. But basically you want to have a really fast Knut. I think, I don't know if he's fast enough. I think I stole some of his gear. I don't know if he goes before the boss anymore. But you want to have like 270 or I guess the, is the boss 250. Boss might be 250 so maybe my Knut still goes first. But he was like 10 speed faster a couple days ago. But basically you want to have like Knut that is 250 plus or something like that. Faster than boss ideally. But even if it was slower, it wouldn't matter. It would just be slightly faster than that. And then faster that way. <laughs> and then you want to have like a tanky guard seeker. Again, we're like 200 speed. I think you could be like 10 or 20 speed slower than this. And this is the basic old setup. But this used to take like four minutes for people. But now you can safely do it with guard seeker Knut. And you don't really need to worry about that. And the same is going to apply on Phantom Shagun as well. I'll show it to you after this, but let's do the full battle. So I'm not, you know, BSing here. I want to show the full teams and you can get an impression. Impression what it looks like. My point here is that you might even be able to do better teams than I'm doing. You probably can do the same teams though. If you didn't update your three big teams here then it's about time to do it. And it's kind of the same right now with the Hydra rewards too. We get the extra chests if you hit 1.2 billion. That might be kind of hard for people to accomplish. It kind of, you know, it heavily depends on your champions and gear. Some people can easily auto that with one key. Some people can't do it manually, no matter how, how hard they try. But if you can do it, now is the time to dig your, your PvE champions. Maybe you don't need one of the specialists that you had built for these dungeons. You don't need to have like 270 speed guard seeker anymore. You can remove some of its gear pieces and maybe put them in your arena teams, maybe your hydra teams, but something more important. You don't need it here anymore. I know for some people the pinnacle of raid is Hydra and that's what what's important to you. If Hydra is important then degear your champions here and put them on Hydra. But if Arena is, is that thing for you then go with that. Me personally we were kind of you know 
tryharding with my clan that we were hopping clans in order to reset our higher rankings every like two or three months we only did it like you know once because our clan is like three months old but that was the plan but then when we got the new addition of sieges and we got the new extra high loot nice we got we got some chaos dust um with those additions i don't think we're hoping clans anymore and we're just sticking with the same old one but we are we are getting lots of extra stone skin and protection accessories now with the 1.2 billion limit or not limit but then um, if you get up to 1.2 billion you keep getting chests and we're basically limiting our points around there sometimes we might go a little bit higher to get the win but we're not trying to climb up in the rankings and we are not asking people to do as much points as they can in fact the opposite we are asking people to do not more than 1.2 billion points in my clan unless we decide at the end that we <laughs> we want to do it a bit more but we have kind of you know try hard crew that maybe not everybody can do much more than 1.2 billion but then there is some people that can do maybe 10 or 20 billion or 70 billion or whatever and they save one key at the end and then we can kind of shuffle but okay that was too fast i didn't even have, have time to talk about this junction but basically we're doing the same thing like most clans do in cbc we're not trying to do the most possible points that we can every time we kind of take it like one hydra class at a time see how much points the enemy clans do and then try to wiggle if we maybe we want to do a lot of points and take the rank one or maybe take the rank two or something like that just like in cvc you know if the enemy clan is doing 10 million points and the first reward is maybe reaction banners and the second reward is um whatever blood shield item you could just go one two you don't have to try to win every time that's kind of what we're doing we're saving our um effort and time for a better time and picking our battles if you do the highest points that you can every time you're just gonna get harder enemies and it's not really gonna improve your situation in any way that's kind of my min maxer you know free to play doomer take but let's talk about the <laughs> phantom shogun so this is what i'm running here again i'm just running my basically pvp champions and that's it you only need one cleanser right now if you can kill it enough fast in some other comps if the boss takes you a lot longer to kill you might need double cleanser and of course if you're a god you can you can do it without any cleansers and you can kill the boss in a couple of seconds but as you can see we're kind of running like a meme team here that we have uh ninja rotos and Galleos as far as nukers go and then we have double nuker and as you saw this is totally enough to do it so look what your account is what champions you have and so on basically put your best nukers here and one cleanser and that's pretty much it you don't need a specific speed tone apart from depending on your cleanser speed you might want to have it to open with them um, like some other skill than cleanse because you obviously don't want to waste it before the boss does the boss but you don't need to look up a guide or a speed tune or really think about too much here and that's it i mean that's basically what i want to say chill out on the dungeons they are not that big deal anymore obviously you need to worry about chaos city and other bs we got right now the new dungeon but i don't think it's that hard and if you're not into pvp then it's not a big deal i think we i'll save the new dungeon for another video so this is about the old ones as far as my hydra teams go i can quickly show you them as well but like i kind of already explained i'm not really trying to do my um highest points i can in fact i'm doing full auto and on top of that low points on purpose i'm cancelling my keys and not doing my max damage but actually i kind of have a good nightmare team well 
for some people this is godly and for some people <laughs> this is a very crappy team but i kind of have a good team that can do like two three hundred million damage full auto which is of course gonna be a lot more in uh points but i happen to pull mishinaki recently and i got agresia long time ago so i'm just running you know random basic uh basic team and even in here i'm using xena and duchess that are in pvp builds that are not specifically built for this as far as lady kimi and tuhan rakko they have like really crappy gear i'm they don't even have my like fifth best perception sets they they have random faction bars gear on and it's good enough to do it i think akrisia and mishinaki have some decent gear but it's not um it's decent but it's not something that i would ever use in pvp Let, let's put it that way they, they have like my savage oh no mishinaki is actually in lethal i think uh, akrisia is in savage and mishinaki is in lethal but these are as you can see my spare sets that i would never use in pvp so as you can see i'm not <laughs> i'm not passionate about pve if you want some speed tune pve guides then you should look um deadwood jedi i'm not your, your guy for that i'm your guy for trying to avoid <laughs> trying to avoid doing pve content that's where i'm at anyway that's it i mean i just wanted to highlight that the dungeons are not that hard anymore don't take hydra too seriously especially now with the 1.2 billion points obviously you can do whatever you want and if you're in a clan that really cares about it you probably have pressure to do hydra points and even though you know i i love mad they were really nice for me for many years and i i'm still kind of surprised that they were let me join them in the first place but one of the things that i really disliked in the plan was that i kind of you know held pressure to do high points in hydra that's not something that i'm into and it feels super nice now <laughs> to be in a clan where i don't have to worry or care about it and everybody you know everybody shares the mentality and we don't have any pressure or drama about it by the way shout out to arena and charles hit me up if you want to join we are the new top arena clan in the game for sure you will see but yeah th this is where i'm at where we're getting the 1.2 billion from chest and that's basically good enough in the end of the cbc we might do a couple million extra to get the rank one or maybe we don't if there's a big gap but we're chilling we're having fun and we're not really bothered or pressured by the hydro obligations you can just focus your time on other things that you truly care about and of course you know some people care about hydra but even if you like theory crafting hydra teams the issue with that is that there's really not you can theory craft teams and build them but they're not going to be better than <laughs> than tranda and yumeko and you're going to have to auto that for like one or two hours every week for every key that you do for me that's not fun that's not you know enjoying the game so i'm not about that and i'm not i'm not advocating for it but you guys do what you're into anyway that's not that's a long rant i don't know if anybody cares about this i i hope you found it useful or helpful or whatever if you don't then let me know in the comments that it was a horrible video and so on but that's it. Have a nice day. See ya.